Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to update your rooted or modded Pixel 2 uh, or Pixel 2 XL to the latest version of Android here. Today we'll be flashing the 8.1 final onto our Pixel 2s here. As you can see uh, we are on the I guess the latest or the November build of Android 8.0 and we are rooted using Magisk so far. So today we'll be using the Magisk patching method to update our phone. We won't be using TWRP still but in a different video I'll show you how to get TWRP on your Pixel 2. So I think as long as you got Magisk Manager installed and the latest version which is 5.4.3 I think at the time of this video but just make sure you have the latest version and once you do we can get started right away. So first up we need to download a few things on our computer. So first up is the SDK platform tools because we're going to be using Fastboot to update our phone. You're going to need to download the appropriate one for your operating system. It's as easy as clicking on it and then making sure you've read the agreement and then pressing the blue download button. Up next is the latest factory image for our Pixel 2. Now I have noticed that they have this extra security thing where you couldn't downgrade, I think, or downgrade versions. Uh, we'll have a look at that later, but we're going to be upgrading. So I think best chances are, or best to think about whether you want to upgrade or not, because you may have a hard time going back down. I'm um, not too sure about that, but just in case, uh, be warned that you may have some issues going back down. Just click the blue link to download the latest 8.1 build here. And last but not least, if you don't have the latest version of Magisk, you're going to need that as well. But more specifically, you're going to want the latest version of the Magisk Manager. So if you already have it on your phone, chances are it's already up to date. But of course, you can double check by scrolling down to the Sources tab, or the Sources section, and clicking on the one for Magisk Manager. And that'll open up the GitHub page. And from here, you can go click on Releases and download the latest release because the latest Magisk link or Magisk Manager link here um, downloads the previous version 5.4.2 so watch out for that and be careful if there are any updates that Magisk shows you on your phone then you should download those as well so in the end you'll be left with these three files the factory image, the platform tools and the Magisk Manager APK now of course we're going to need to start extracting things now if you already have your platform tools sorted out from when you rooted your Pixel 2 you can use the same ones there but it's always good to keep it up to date anyways. Since we might be using ADB as well, we're going to extract all the platform tools that we need. So that is the ADB EXE, the two DLLs here, fastboot.exe and the libwinp thread one DLL. Drag those outside into the same folder. Now we can close the platform tools thing and we can open up the factory image like so. Open up the walleye folder. And then we'll extract the bootloader and radio. Maybe it was the bootloader that couldn't be downgraded, but uh, we'll see. And we want to open up the image zip located inside the factory image, like so. Okay, once that's open, you're going to see a lot of these images, right? Um, well, we don't need to flash all of them, but you can if you want to. But the most important ones, I believe, are the, these ones. You want to extract the boot image. You want to extract probably the DTBO image. You also want to extract the system images, system image and system underscore other, and also vendor image. And we'll be flashing these to both the A and B partitions for uh, on our pixel. So let's just extract those images. Okay, so we've got everything extracted. We can close the factory image folders and the image folder, um, I mean, zip file. And now before we start or get started, we're going to need to patch the boot image. So what we want to do is copy over the boot image that we've extracted from our factory image and just extract or sorry, copy that over to your device here. Alternatively, you can use ADB push to push it to your phone. I'm just going to quickly uh, put my phone into transferring files mode and I'm just going to copy it to the internal storage like so. I'm just going to paste it there and we'll see it at the bottom here. So now we need to go back to our phone. Hopefully you've got Magisk Manager already installed. I mean, you should. So to do this, we're going to tap on install and then tap on install and then tap on patch boot image file like that. And then what we want to do is scroll down and find the boot image that we've extracted. And it's going to download the latest version of Magisk 14.5. Now, of course, yours may be different, but in the case that you don't see the latest version as 14.5, you want to change the update channel for in Magisk. So if you go to the settings and change the update channel to beta, you will get the notification for 14.5. Do 
just to make sure that the Magis Manager downloads the correct one. You can see it's uh, just downloading it right here. So we'll fast forward this until we download all of it and Magis patches our boot image. Okay, now that's done, you can see our boot image, or the patched one at least, is saved in the Magisk Manager folder named patched underscore boot dot img. So I think we, will, we can close this and we can use ADB pool to get that off of our phone in case your phone doesn't or your computer doesn't see it in the file manager. So let's just have a quick look. If we go back to our device and go to the Magisk Manager folder, now here it is. Hopefully that's the one. Now, if you don't see it here, you can use ADB to do it, which I'll show you. What you need to do is open up a command prompt or a PowerShell window here. I'm going to be using the console emulator just uh, so I can show you guys a bit better and how it looks. So basically what you want to type is ADB and then devices. Make sure you've got USB debugging enabled and also check that you've accepted the computer's RSA fingerprint and then you shall see your device's serial number here. Now you've probably already done this before, so we're going to type in adb pool and then just the location of the boot image. So it's in, I'm just going to type in SD card and then magisk manager and then I'm going to type in uh, patched boot.img and then you can just hit enter. This will pull the image to our same directory where we opened up the command prompt window. So just keep an eye out for the directory that you're in and you shall see it over here the patch boot image. Okay, so one last thing we need to do on our phone before we get into updating this is to actually remove any substratum overlays or themes that you may have installed. So to do that, all you have to do is open up the substratum app. You can see I've got the Swift Dark theme here. Just go over to your manager and then toggle all overlays with using that switch. Tap on the little uh, floating action button down there and then tap on uninstall selected. Now this is probably for the best practice when you do these updates. So you can see everything's uh, uninstalled now, everything looks quite stock. And from there, uh, we can continue. So let's do that. We're going to power off our device. Uh, actually, plug in your phone, like so, with the USB cable, and then tap on restart. But hold the volume down button as soon as your phone turns black. So when it freezes up like this, hold the volume down button. And your phone should boot into the bootloader. Okay, so that took a little bit longer, but that's alright. So now we can begin the flashing procedure. So first up, we are going to flash the bootloader. So our phone's just in there. Oh, well, I should say in the bootloader. So we're going to flash the bootloader image. So just give me a second here. What we're going to do is type in fastboot devices, just to check that our phone is actually connected in fastboot. When you get the serial number like this, you know your phone's connected properly. So what you want to do first is update the bootloader. Type in fastboot, flash bootloader. Leave a space in the end and drag in the bootloader image, like so. Hit enter. So if you experience this issue when flashing the bootloader, you can see here it says failed remote command flash error. It means you are on a bootloader version prior to the one in December, which uh, solves this issue after doing some reading on XDA. So if you're like me, I'm on November, the November update. I didn't update to the December one. And I'm on the older bootloader, which has this bug, I guess. So you will need to use a full OTA or the OTA file and upload, oh, sorry, update your device's bootloader through that way. And then after that, you'll be able to follow the future security update videos using Fastboot. So if you're suffering from this issue, you're going to have to watch a different video. I'm very sorry, but uh, that video is linked down below in the more info. So have a look at that to update your phone. So now when your phone is okay to get flashed, let's get straight back into it. So of course, I already demoed flashing the bootloader, but I'm just going to do that once more so you can see what it looks like. We're going to type in fastboot flash bootloader. You can do bootloader underscore A, and then we'll drag in the bootloader image. Oops, now you can see I already did a mistake here. Uh, you need to leave a space, of course, after the keyword bootloader underscore A and your image file. And this is what it should look like, updating the bootloader. Fantastic. We're going to do that with the second secondary side. So we're going to type in fastboot flash bootloader underscore B. Leave a space in the end and drag in the same bootloader image and hit enter. Alrighty. Once that's done, 
we're going to reboot our phone back into the bootloader. So make sure it's our updated one. Fastboot reboot dash bootloader. If you have a keen eye, you may have noticed that I'm actually already on the latest bootloader version, but that was from a different video. So if you're coming from the developer preview, this should work just fine. But um, you'll know what I'm talking about if it happened to you. So next up, we're going to flash the latest radio image. So to do that, we're going to type in fastboot flash radio a underscore a I should say leave a space in the end drag in the radio image and then we're going to update radio b I'm going to type in fastboot flash radio underscore b leave a space in the end and drag in the radio image now you'll get used to all this a b switch ups so just make sure when you flash a you should flash b so let's uh, keep moving on we're going to flash the patched boot image now this one you only need to flash to one of the I guess your current active slot so this is what you'll do for your boot image I'm going to type in fast boot flash boot uh, no A or B you want to flash the one that you are currently on so since I'm on B and this has been patched for B we just need to hit enter you may notice my typo you don't want the system image so you type in fast boot flash boot and you want to drag in the patched boot image and then hit enter and then what you want to do next is flash the DTBO, which is the device tree blob something, I think. So we need that for, it's kind of related to the vendor image, I think. So we'll need to update that as well. We'll type in fastboot flash DTBO underscore A, leave a space in the end, dragging our DTBO image. And then we'll do the same for the B side, fastboot flash dtbo underscore b, leave a space, and then flash the same image. Up next, we're going to flash the vendor image. So we'll type in fastboot flash vendor, vendor underscore a, leave a space over there, and then we'll drag in the vendor image. And then we're going to flash it to the alternate side as well. So we're going to type in fastboot, Flash vendor underscore b leave a space after that and dragging the vendor image once more I guess we did a little bit of a switch up here but last but not least we're going to flash the system image we just want to type in fastboot flash system don't put anything after the system and drag in our system image So to flash the other partition, what you need to do is type in fastboot and then two dashes, type in slot and then type in other and what you want to do is type in flash and then system and then drag in the system underscore other dot image and that should flash it to system A. Now you can see it has and it's very important that you put double dash slot other before or after fastboot and before flash. And you can see the current boot slot on my phone is noted as B and so this makes sure this makes sure that you won't get confused when I say A or B you'll just know that your fastboot will know that you're just going to flash the other non-active slot once that's done uh, we can just reboot our phone now so we can press the power button here to select start and our phone shall boot up all the way into Android 8.1 the final build at least so I'm going to fast forward this you'll see this message and all that and since we flash the patch boot image that we got from Magisk Manager earlier in this video our phone should be booted as soon as we boot in so I'm going to fast forward this and check it out there okay so our phone has turned on I'm always uh, very impressed at how fast this turns on and okay looks like we're booted in let's have a look at our build number just so we can see we're on the OPM 1.17 and then we're on 8.0. Let's have a look at Magisk to make sure that we are still rooted. And let's open that up. You can see we are rooted just fine. There seems to be, um, well, Magisk actually does um, patch the DTBO image, so that's fine. That means you will actually get a message saying that your phone has an internal or system error and that you'll need to contact someone about it or flash the images again. But that is fine. I guess that is currently a quote-unquote feature of Magisk 14.5 where it automatically patches a DTBO which disables the verify or verity check on the vendor partition. 
So you'll see an error message come up every time you reboot. Don't worry, you can ignore it. Or you can use an older version of Magisk. But you can see it'll patch it for you automatically and you'll get an error message. But that should be fixed uh, in a ver later version of Magisk. When that comes out, I'll show you how to fix that right up. There is an XDA thread, which I'll link down below if you want to do it before I make a video about it. But um, otherwise, uh, I hope you don't mind a little message every time you reboot your phone, which isn't too bad. So that's it for this video, guys. I guess we can just have a look at Titanium Backup or something. Or the TWRP app, which uh, I don't want. But yeah, you can see we or well, it's still granted itself root access, which is fine. And it's working just fine. So thanks for watching, guys. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave it down below. I'll be more than happy to answer those. And as always, happy flashing.